Eric Brait. Uh, we're tracking some very dangerous weather that's in Louisiana. So of course our weather, there's no issue, but this is so close to home. We have a lot of people that have family and friends there that we want to hop on Facebook and give you some good coverage and an idea of what's going on. Yes, uh, tornadoes in New Orleans have been caught on video, so they're confirmed tornadoes. They've had several of them, at mm -hmm. least five at this point in time, I believe. And some of the video that we've seen, I mean, we're not talking quick spin-ups that are small tornadoes. Right. I mean, massive wedge tornadoes that are very close to the, to the New Orleans area. Yeah, tornadoes that stay on the ground for a long time. They have wide paths, and they're rolling through areas that are pretty densely populated. So it's not good news for Louisiana today. Of, of course, it's going to take some time for any kind of damage uh, estimates yes. and storm reports, things like that, to come filtering in. We expect that by the end of the day today, it's not going to be looking pretty for the city of New Orleans. No, unfortunately, this is a setup where we could be talking about loss of life. Uh, so let's get you updated on what actually is happening right now, and then we'll talk about what's been happening over the past few hours. So the latest information, we have a tornado watch box that does include East Louisiana. The watch is up through 2 p.m., and we have two warnings within the watch. So again, a watch means that the atmosphere is primed for tornadoes to possibly happen. The warning means there's actually a tornado on the ground or it could happen at any moment. So we are tracking two actual warnings and the locations where we're most concerned about. I'm going to go to the north warning because that one is actually right over land. It's north of Hammond along uh, the intersection of 55 and I-10. So it's not along I-10, it's north of that, but it's crossing over 55 around the Hammond area. And then we have one that's southeast of New Orleans. The reason why I'm touching on the second is because as we zoom in, you can tell that that is actually heading over water right now. If it holds together, that's tracking off to the north and east. So that would be moving towards I-10, eventually ending up to the west of Biloxi. But again, you know, it's over water. So the one that is north of Hammond would probably be the one that I would really be focusing on because that one is, you know, over some populated areas. Um, the reports that a lot of people are talking about are what happened earlier, probably about at this point, an it's hour about, and 45 minutes ago. Yeah, about ago. 11 o'clock this morning, I think, is when the big tornado uh, kind of hit uh, New Orleans. I think it was on the east side. If I'm, yeah, if I'm the northeast side. Yeah. If, if we take you over here, this is the Storm Prediction Center. If you Google SPC, this is what you'll pop up. And these are the tornado reports. So, so far they've had five reports, but keep in mind, these initial reports, sometimes they happen to be from the same tornado. So that's why Eric and I are saying we really have to wait until later today to get a real sense of what's happening. But again, uh, it's already saying that two injuries have been reported by emergency management in Louisiana because because of a tornado report. So it's definitely a very serious situation, but you can see that they're happening in East Louisiana. Now, one of the areas that did have reported damage from the tornado that Eric brought up is the one that happened northeast of downtown Louisiana. They actually have reports of walls that have been blown down at the National Finance Center, which is just to the northeast of downtown New Orleans. So that massive wedge tornado happened around the I-10 corridor. And again, that happened uh, at this point almost two hours ago closer to about 11 a.m. Central Time. Now, we're still expecting devastating weather to be continuing through the afternoon. The tornado watch for eastern Louisiana is until 2 p.m., but then the storm system is going to push to the east. So our next focused area is going to be, uh, right now, Mississippi is getting hit pretty hard, but Alabama into the panhandle of Florida, the west side of that, this tornado watch box is issued until 6 p.m. So again, you know, this is going to be a very active afternoon and evening for all of our friends stretching along I-10 right along the Gulf Coast. Yeah, Biloxi, Mississippi, Mobile, Alabama, pretty mm -hmm. much everybody along the Gulf Coast this afternoon is going to have to deal with this. Now, New Orleans, it looks like, is going to be exiting really the, the threat area. You'll notice that this box right here, Britta mentioned, how long was the tornado watch Until for? 2 p.m. So 2 pretty PM. soon what National right. Weather Service will do is they'll cut it in half and they'll right. start watching as it moves east. Yeah, I would even say at this point in time, the western portion of this watch box uh, is probably not not going to be seeing any more severe weather. You can kind of see that the activity is pushing to the east of New Orleans right now. Uh, that's where the best dynamics are as far as uh, storm formation and particularly rotating storm formation, yeah. supercell formation in this And they actually instance. dropped that warning uh, that we were watching to 
the southeast, it was the southeast New Orleans, now that storm is over water. So yes. the only active tornado warning that we have is that cell that is north of Hammond and uh, right over 55. So 55, you know, it, it looks nasty, but the actual tornado threat is actually to the east of 55 at this point. So areas like Folsom, that would be an area where people need to seek shelter immediately. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty serious situation. If you have family and friends in the area, you need to make sure that they are seeking shelter, especially if you have family and friends in Mobile, Biloxi, uh, heading into Pensacola. Those are the folks that need to really be listening over the next four hours so they're prepared if warnings pop up. Absolutely. Yeah, Todd in uh, Livingston Parish says, we got lucky, just rain here, tornado missed us by about 10 miles. Is that kind of what you're seeing on the maps here? Uh, you know, it's... I'm not exactly sure where Livingston Parish is. Exactly. You know, obviously this isn't our viewing area, so a lot of those smaller towns we don't know off the cuff of our hand, but you know, it, it is very typical in tornado coverage that you have that that close call. You know, your house can be totally fine and then literally across the street you have a house that's demolished. Yeah, it's, um, you know, you kind of have to look at the overall threat and be prepared for it, but certainly, you know, a, a tornado itself usually does pretty isolated damage, relatively speaking, but, you know, a wide area has to be prepared for it. If you have a tornado warning, um, you know, in your vicinity, you have to assume that the tornado is coming to you. I mean, Exactly. No assume, matter what side that of is, that box you're on. Yeah. Chances are it won't, but on the rare occasion that you are, you know, in the path of the tornado, you really have to, you know, be prepared for it because it can do major damage, especially the tornadoes that we're talking about here. The ones they caught on video were pretty large wedge tornadoes. So I would say mm -hmm. probably EF3, maybe the one that we saw. I mean, I'm just throwing that out. Yeah. There. You not... know, how they'll actually determine it is that the National Weather Service, when this is all said and done, we're talking about tomorrow, first day of light is when the survey teams will go out. They will actually go look at the damage and you can see where the rotation was. You'll literally have two by fours going in one direction and then a tree going in the opposite direction. And that shows where that rotation was. And they'll measure how much you know, debris field they have. Yeah. How much did the tornado eat, for a lack of a better right. term? They kind of back into mm -hmm. the strength of the tornado. They know, um, you know, an EF3 tornado causes such and such type of damage. Like, it'll take down walls and buildings. It'll, mm -hmm. you know, throw cars or semi-trucks 100 yards, whatever. So they actually take a look at the damage caused by the tornado and determine how severe the damage is, and then they kind of back calculate, if you will, how strong the tornado was. They estimate what the winds were. You know, to some extent, they can probably, you know, make an estimate using radar imagery, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, for the most part, it is the, the, damage, the survey. damage survey that they use to determine the strength of the tornado. And they'll also look at video to see how big mm -hmm. the tornado is, how wide the actual path is. And I think um, an EF3 is a good early estimation just off the video. Yeah. I mean, it was a huge wedge tornado. Yeah. You don't get that with an EF0, EF1, EF2. Right. You have to have a very strong tornado to see that. Yeah. Um, so again, folks, if you're, if you're joining us and you've been hearing a lot about this coverage that's happening in New Orleans, the threat for New Orleans itself is pretty much wrapped up. The folks that we really want to warn live in Mobile, Biloxi, moving into Orange Beach, Pensacola Beach, anywhere from Mississippi into Alabama, and then, you know, the panhandle of Florida. This area is under a watch box until 6 p.m. So those are the folks that really need to have a way to get warnings. The only active warning that we have is around the Hammond area in Louisiana. Otherwise, this is a watch scenario, which means that it can happen at any time. So you have to make sure that you have a way to get warnings. And if you have a tornado warning, assume that there's a tornado on the ground heading to you. Lowest level of your home, put as many walls between you and the outside as you can. Stay away from the windows. Uh, of course, basements are the best place to go, yes. but most of the houses mm, in the area, yeah, area. Yeah, exactly, yeah. you don't have a basement. So an interior bathroom is a great mm -hmm. option. Getting in the tub a is closet. awesome. A closet. Yeah. I always tell people, avoid the pantry. Look at what's around you. If a tornado yeah, does knock something out, yeah. you don't want anything falling on top of you in a pantry. You got glass, you got canned goods, so stay away from that option. You want to, you know, limit the things around you. Yep. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. If you have any questions, let us know. Of course, uh, Frank Billingsley is going to be in here. I'm sure he's going to be doing some coverage at the 4, 5, and 6, just to at least touch on what's been going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we hear of anything popping up, we'll let you know.